Minnesota as a whole, there's a lot of 14 inch class fish caught every year and it's super exciting to catch a fish like that. But to catch a fish that you literally pull out of the hole and don't even know what it is, you know, you're looking at it. I want a crappie that's gonna scare me. We got her, Bart. We got her, buddy. Get it. Boom! That's a giant. Well, I mean, last year was awesome. I mean, we this was our first like attempt at documenting this stuff and we had a very limited time crunch to get everything done. I think with it being a little bit shorter, um, really not having good ice early and then not being able to go through the entire ice season really kind of limited what you know we were able to actually do. Last year was really successful. We caught some really big fish, got some really big fish on camera actually. We accomplished some really awesome things. I think we got on some really cool bites and we're able to catch some really, really big fish. But we were unprepared prepared. Um, we went out there kind of doing this on a whim, you know, we were just kind of, we'd go to these lakes and just kind of do no research, do really the least amount of stuff we could do. Well, this year we're a lot more prepared. I, I really think that, uh, you know, we learned a lot from last year, even though we've always been doing this, you know, you're always learning something. And I think this year, this year's going to be a good one. I'm hoping, you know, we left some stuff on the table last year we you know missed some fish broke some fish off and we also just didn't quite accomplish exactly what we wanted you know i think we walked out of that in our minds knowing that there was more that we could have done or there was more we wanted to show a world-class fish because this is one of the few places kind of in the country you can actually chase that caliber of a fish we're dedicating so much more time and passion into this i think uh I think we're gonna have a good time. When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. Good morning and welcome back to the Crappie Chronicles. I'm your host, Adam Bartusik, and uh, I think this is episode seven. Today is Tuesday, January 4th. I hope you had a great time with your family during the holiday season. Um, first of all, I'm just gonna briefly apologize for kind of weird dropping of the videos. Holidays kind of messed some stuff up. We had some really late ice. And then uh, actually last week we were out fish fishing and filming with Barstool Sports. Uh, we were with the Spit and Chicklets guys. So you will see a video of us fishing with them. Uh, soon and that was a really cool experience and a lot of fun but now we are back on the chase and kind of to celebrate the new year and everything we are officially oh god i can't get the zipper griff help oh there we go okay now we are going to release all the other merch and everyone's been asking about that blue sweatshirt so i will say there is limited quantities of this stuff like there is not a lot of it we didn't get a ton of it so if you want it you need to get it now so swing on over to the merch store and get it and uh yeah I think now Griff and I are going to get fishing. Now, where are we today? We are back in some backwaters again. 
And yes, this is not the Backwater Chronicles. We are going to be done with the Backwaters after this. Um, ice has kind of firmed up everywhere and we're gonna be good to go, but there is a bite going on right now with some absolute donkeys. You didn't see any B-roll leading into this. You didn't see any like travel or anything. It's just Griff and I today, Pink and Waldo are working, and we're just gonna to try to catch some magnums. We're gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna to try to catch some freaks. So uh, yeah, today should be fun. We got a wicked cold front coming tomorrow, so they gotta eat. Yeah, that one. Oh, dinko. <clears throat> no hesitation though. So I'm throwing that new ribbon leech spoon. I messed with it. If you watched the last episode, I messed with a bigger one. I actually went home and I ordered some of the 1 16th size and gosh dang it, I have a giant mark down there right now and it's tangled. Um, I went home and ordered some of the 1 16th size and me, Griff and Waldo are all like really pumped up about these things. They, f when they fall, they like wobble really hard. So if you can find some active fish, it should be on. <clears throat> How deep did you have there, by the way? That's about what I had. I'm in five and a half here oh my god where's my spoon thought he was bigger than that i was sick i just got to this whole drop down mark came screaming in well i get to catch him again oh there he goes and now I have a spoon in my back. Um, that was super sick. I just got to this whole drop down and I had a mark come in like two feet down. And he just floored it. We're getting bigger. That's a good one. Starting to get bigger. It's a white. One thing that's fun about white crappies is they fight so dang hard. And river crappies in general, but I swear these whites just have a little more mean to them, kind of like a small mouth. We got him on the pinhead. I think he may have wanted that one in his guts. Good way to start, though. There's a nicer one. Eleven, probably. It's a pretty solid fish. Pinky gold pinhead. Mm, doing work. Wow. That was incredible. These dang white crappies, man. They are just mean. Little guy. But, I mean, that was like a lake trout vapor trail in like literally four feet, uh, five and a half feet of water. I mean, we are just crushing them. They're definitely active. We just have to find where the big ones are. There we go, starting to pick up a little bit. Switched over to the black drop kick with the motor oil Mackie Mackie. First drop, did well.
Oh, that was all there, baby. Just slacklining me. Beautiful white crappie. Yeah, so a little update. Uh, got out here and the bite was pretty hot right away. Um, wind picked up and they just shut off. So I think it was just a little pressure change. Um, but we're gonna set up some iFish Pros here, kind of spread out our lines and see if we can't get a big one. Because um, it's only the two of us, so we need to yeah, use our four it's lines. It's just me and Bart, so we gotta kind of utilize what we got. So um, yeah, we're just gonna spread them out and see where they start biting and just keep hole hopping. We drilled probably about 75 to 100 holes now, so we're just gonna keep working this little edge and see what happens. And it seems like they have completely stopped eating a spoon. Yes, yep, we had to switch to plastics and then they started biting again, so. Uh, they wanted the aggressive presentation right away, and now they just kind of petered out. So now we're going to put up some set lines and then uh, jig with plastics until they don't bite that, and we'll probably switch back. you're big. Oh. Dang it. That was a really big one. Just nipped it. Must have grabbed the plastic. Felt it pluck out. That was a big one. Oh, okay, now I'm marking fish. Better. We are getting better. That's a perfect eater. We're actually, we got one kept because it destroyed a tip-up. So I'm going to keep that one. I think Colin needs some fish for cooking eventually. So we might as well provide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we might as well. Oh, God. It's a white, that's why. Yeah. It's another good eater. Just came in and absolutely train wrecked me. I didn't even move it. When you find them again, they're doing it. But... They have definitely switched off the spoon. Don't move, Bart. Solid white one. Eleven. Well, we finally got a pretty good one. I mean, nothing crazy, but just coming in and throttling the bait. I mean, we switched from, uh, should probably let that one go. It's a little big to keep, but probably 12 inch or what you say, Bart? Yeah. Nice white. But uh, yeah, like we said earlier, we were using, uh, I was using a pinhead. Bart was using the ribbon leech yeah, spoon. Yeah, that new ribbon speed leech spoon, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they were absolutely throating that thing, and uh, now it's, they kind of just wouldn't even come in on the screen, so we kind of switched up to plastics, and uh, we're right back to them just just absolutely just coming in and just you hook them, and I mean, it's halfway down their throat. Um, if you're not quick, you're going to kill a couple, because they're, they're eating it that good. I mean, that one just vapor trailed out of nowhere, like it was just on there. So I'm using the Mackie Mackie, the uh, motor oil. One's got a little gimpy leg, but I like it. And then uh, you've been using the, the whammy, right? Yeah. Black. Mm -hmm. And it definitely seems like the darker colors, because I threw the white uh, Mackie Mackie down there, and I had them come look at it, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't commit to it. They'd kind of come up there and just nip at it. So 
I went to the tried and true uh, motor oil that I've been using all year pretty much and now it's just you're hooking them you know halfway in their mouth and none of this lip and stuff either they come in they eat it there's no more of this looking at it or anything so I think we dialed it in you know and we'll just keep doing that throughout the day switching uh, based on their attitude and if they get super fired up again we might be able to go back to the spoons you know uh, but we got all day so we'll just keep at it Not the one I was trying to catch. This one came from the bottom. It just was How like deep are you right there? <clears throat> six feet. Okay. Six yeah, there's definitely a ledge right here. <laughs> that is. I don't think it's a monster. It's a good one, but he's not huge. This isn't the one I was trying to catch. Stuck it on the camera. That's a pretty solid black one. Huh? I was trying to catch a different one, and that guy come in there and stole it away. Well, bye, friend. Another eater. Hey, Griff and I are just talking. <laughs> we haven't gotten a big one yet, but it's just really cool to be in a place where it's like six incher, eight incher, 10 incher, 12 incher giant. Um, just steady action all day. As long as you're around them, you got a shot at one. But you got to keep plucking away. Those big ones eat and bite windows. So as long as you stay on top of the fish, You'll have an opportunity. I had another one do it. What do I got to do, man? Oh, he's back. Got him. Oh, you're big. Come here. There we go. So, I got our first kind of better one, I'd say. I mean, the board's over there and we're, it's just Griff and I. So this is probably, I don't know, 12, 12 and a half, maybe 13 inch, but a nice white crappie. I'm gonna let this one go. You wanna release these bigger ones so that we can keep catching them. And uh, yeah, I actually was marketing. Griff and I were talking about, what's funny about that one was the white crappies today, when they eat, we haven't even marked them. They just vapor trail up and crush it. But that one came up really slowly, actually. And I didn't realize how big he was until he was in the hole. But yeah, I caught that one on. Griff's been using the... Uh... Oh, yeah, it's super tangled. That is perfect. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's good. Um, so I caught that one on a drop XL with a black whammy. Griff's using a green pumpkin or motor oil. Um, Mackie Matt. Mackie Matty. Mackie Mackie. But... Uh, yeah, what's super cool, I guess, about today and kind of our rod series that we have at Thorn, um, they're super versatile. So like this morning, we were pounding spoons with Waldo's rod, and now we've gotten over to uh, my spring bobber rod. And what we've talked about, we really love this rod, especially in shallow water and for big fish, because it is so parabolic. So when you set the hook on them, you actually have a little bit of leeway rather than just smashing them into the bottom of the ice. Um, but yeah, you guys can get these at Thorn Brothers. You can get them online if you want to, but definitely go in and check them out. If you're a big pan fisherman, they'll really help. They'll really help you out, to be honest. I mean, they're $100 rods, but they're worth it if this is what you do. And now we're going to hope for a bigger one. The bite's been getting better, so that's good. And Bart's going to untangle this stuff. Yeah, and I'm going to take like 20 minutes to untangle this thing. Probably this is just ridiculous. <laughs> I can catch 14, 15 inches, but I keep missing them. Mega ones, I don't know what it is.
like a 16. It was giant, dude. I've, well, I've literally seen it like three times. Dude, it was huge. I was just, I set my rod down to do something and the spring bobber just goes. Right. <laughs> Go from that to that. Oh, backwaters. Yuck. Hook into Mega, lose them at the hole, catch puny little guy. Next drop. That's the backwaters for you. Kick you right in and. The... Yeah, it's weird though. They'll just pick little areas even in, in these things, you know? Yeah. Nice one, beautiful white crappie, Mackie Mackie, drop kick combo, killer. Ooh, there's a really big one down there. Ooh. I'm gonna hold you out for a second, man. Not like it's cold out here. Not that big. Just had a lot of heart. We got her, Bart. We got her, buddy. Fucking right. Boom. That's a giant. Boom. Uh, what? That is a 10 incher. This is, I don't know how many inches. Alright, well we just got this absolute mammoth, I mean, 16 and a quarter, I mean look at the back in that. This is why you come to the river backwaters to catch things like this. I mean that's pushing easily 3 pounds, I mean, wish we had a scale to check, but, you know, but what a monster. Drop kick, Mackie Mackie motor oil, does it again. Alright, see you later big girl, thank you for your... The and like we said, they get different oh. when they get bigger. <clears throat> when they come up the hole and you see that, it's just an absolute, I mean, it doesn't look real. Like that mouth is, I mean, the mouth was like that big around. Yeah, and uh, she actually cooperated very nice and came straight up. Like I knew it was big and it just literally right up the hole for me. So that was, that was sweet. Um, that doesn't happen very much. But uh, finally, we've been after a fish of that caliber for a while now and finally happened and let's try to get another one. Okay, and that's a wrap on today. We actually stayed out like two or three more hours after Griff caught that one and we must have hit a bite window perfectly because afterwards we caught like maybe four dinks. Um, so we capitalized on our opportunity. That was nice. Could have been a really epic day if we landed them all, but you're going to lose some bigger fish when you're doing this. So this is really exciting. We finally got a big one. Griff, what do you think? You got a giant. Oh, uh, that was awesome, man. It's been a while since I've seen one that looks like that when they come up the hole and you're just like, what is this? Like, they don't even look real. You freak out. Um, I've caught a lot of big ones and I still freak out, which is, that's the best feeling. You come out here and you finally hook one, land it. Um, and I actually lost one probably pretty close to the same size at the hole, just probably 20 minutes before that. And uh, that was a little heartbreaking, but 
I kept at it and got her, got it, got another chance and uh, capitalized on that one. Yeah, yeah. So yes, that is what this whole series is based around. You can get big crappies everywhere in the state of Minnesota, but it seems like they are mostly targetable, targetable within 60 miles of the Twin Cities. So it was great to get another freak. And um, yeah, 16 and a quarter is really big and you can get all the tackle we used in everything today at Thorn Brothers. Please support them. They support us greatly. And uh, yeah, I mean, our whole goal this series, like I said before, I don't even think we told you guys, is um, we wanted 18. So we got some work to do. But until next time, we're on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs>